Americans want to dream again, but they're not sure who's going to make that happen. Well, the, the real question. In an election this close, endorsements by leading figures for each of the candidates are very important, particularly when those endorsements come from public figures. Barack Obama's picked up three, which have drawn a lot of attention. The endorsement of the mayor of New York, Michael Bloomberg, of the former Secretary of State, Colin Powell, and to the endorsement of Susan Eisenhower, the granddaughter of President Eisenhower and uh, the chairman emeritus of the Eisenhower Institute. She's with me now. Uh, obviously, a great Republican family, how does it end up supporting a Democratic candidate? Well, I supported Barack Obama in 2008 and was very active in that campaign. As a matter of fact, at that time, I left the Repar Republican Party and became an independent and then actually spoke at the Democratic National Convention. But this year, I thought I would wait until all the debates were over to really see how the candidates stacked up. I take uh, being an independent seriously. And I decided uh, at the end of the day that I was going to support the president again. It has to be said that a lot of uh, the Obama supporters I've spoken to do share the sort of sentiment we were just hearing in uh, that report, that uh, it hasn't been great for the American dream over the last year, that they're disappointed with uh, the country and with the president's past four years. Well, I think anybody taking that position when he did in, in, the, uh, in the depths of this financial crisis uh, would have it, uh, their critics. But I think, in fact, uh, the big problem here is Americans forget where we were four years ago. It was, it was scary. Every day you woke up, you wondered whether your bank was still going to be in business. And, and I think we've made a lot of progress. Certainly in, in my field, I, I see the economy improving. I mean, would you actually say America's been a success over the last four years? Well, I mean, it's, uh, if, um, uh, there's no way to prove a negative. Uh, but it's certainly, uh, I think it's fair to say that we were on the brink of a collapse uh, in 2008, 2009, and we've weathered that. Uh, the economy is coming back. Consumer confidence is growing. The housing market's improving, and so. Uh, and I think also it's very important that our foreign policy, I think, has uh, been pretty solid in the last four years. How close do you think this election is? I think it's going to be really close. I was just thinking, uh, 12 years ago, I was on the rooftop of the Hay Adams overlooking the White House for a television station, and they asked us who was going to win. This is in 2000, of This course, is in yes. 2000. I said, too close to call. And as it turns out, it ended up in the courts, and we had a prolonged process where we didn't know who was going to be president of the United States. So you really think it's that close? I don't think it's that close this time because there's more than one state that's under um, uh, some question. So uh, if you have a number of toss-up states, um, there's some combination that will get the president there. Uh, but I do think it's going to be close. And uh, I think the most important, unfortunate thing would be if we have a, a disparity between the Electoral College and the popular vote. It has to be said, the main arguments from both sides have been about Barack Obama's record over the last four years. Mm -hmm. Do we really know what he's going to do if he's given another four years in the White House? I think you can expect uh, a continuation of his current policy, but I think I'd, I'd turn the question the other way. What do we know about Mitt Romney? He's spent the entire campaign. Well, he says he's a businessman. He knows how to get the well, economy exactly, working again. Well, exactly. But, you know, uh, being a CEO of a company is quite different than uh, being the president of the United States. And he had to make some very, very important promises uh, to the right wing of his party during the primary season, he's going to want a second term. And uh, he's going to have to keep his base in line if he wants that second term. Yeah, I was going to ask you that about the Republican Party, the party you grew up in. Mm -hmm. Would there be a place for your grandfather in the, in, in the modern Republican Party? I, I think that he would have a, a very hard sell at this particular time. The party's moved way to the right. Uh, the thing that was uh, distinct about the Eisenhower administration, he was a deficit hawk. Uh, but he was very tough on military spending, uh, but he was also a, a social progressive. So uh, that wing of the party really doesn't exist anymore. And of course, military spending is, is a big issue that uh, Romney says he would put it up. Barack Obama has a program of cuts there. And in places like Virginia, with a right. very strong military background, that's pretty unpopular. Well, I have to say that's one reason I decided to support the president again. Romney wants to uh, tie military spending to 4% of our GDP. So he's tying it to our GDP, not to military strategy. And in my book, that's crazy. You have to have a strategy, and then you have to put the resources behind it, not the other way around. All right, one prediction. Give us one prediction of what's going to happen on Tuesday night. 
Um, the prediction is at least there'll be a winner and we can all get behind our new president. I think that's going to be President Obama, but as you know what Harold Wilson used to say, a week in politics is a very long time. Well, we've only got 48 hours. I know, exactly. <laughs> Six hours now, thank you very much indeed. Uh, well, from Washington, back to you. Sharon Osborne has revealed that she has had a double mastectomy. The former X Factor judge.